Welcome to the Quarantine Players. Tonight, we have a reading of CSI Grandma's House, an adult fractured fairy tale in the film noir style, written by Martin Heavysides, who's joining us tonight and will be um, part of our discussion after the show. Let's welcome Sophia Manconi, our director. Hi, my name is Sophia Manconi. I directed this play tonight, and I'm going to let our cast introduce themselves. I will be reading the stage directions. My name is Laurie Brooks, and I'll be reading for Red Rida. My name is Scott Olson, and I'll be reading for Albert Skillset. My name is uh, Edsel Romero, and I will be reading for Tony Pitchblend. My name is Tamara Peters, and I will be reading for Karina Patrimoine. Tori Clay, and I'll be reading for Pieto. My name is Leslie Ross, and I'll be reading Supervisor Judy Turini. My, My name, name is Michaela Trimpey, and I will be reading Natalie Wood. My name is Adam Denrick. I will be reading Raoul de Bunstrap. We'll get right into it. CSI Grandma's House. Stage in darkness. Cell phone rings. Spotlight up. What? What? Sorry, you're breaking up. What? I'll be right there. Is she? Oh, damn it. Where are you phoning from? A well? Oh. I have to get right over there. From the sound of things, it might already be too late. It's not that I didn't suspect that long ago. <laughs> Home invasion out there in that thicket of woods surrounding those houses, five in a row on the highway, spaced over two miles. Don't even know why they put up a sign and called it a town. I bet Albert was calling me from there. <laughs> Haunted, spooky trees if there ever were. Signals always breaking up. God, he knows even the neighborhood wireless is spotty and unreliable. I wonder if Albert is the investigating detective. Well, that would be a, a tragic irony. He was so fond of Gran, more than any of us, maybe. Oh, what do I mean, tragic irony? I'm getting ahead of myself. It's probably just a minor home invasion, prank even, scare her into moving into the city once and for all, maybe. But nothing more, no. no. Feisty, I think you could safely call her that. Strong for her age. <laughs> or any age, really, and all that martial arts training. I've always said it was bursting to come out sometime. <laughs> I pity the home invader, or prankster, if anything. I still remember the red sting when I was very small from even a friendly slap on the bum, God, let alone an all-out spanking. You got here quickly. I wasn't sure I'd even get a message through. Normally, police sell us powerful enough. I've gotten perfectly clear signals in Snow Valley in December, bouncing somehow off the craggy cliff faces all around. It was terrible. I'm glad you weren't here to see it. The aftermath, I mean. It, I'd most likely have prevented the murder if I'd been here to see that. Pool of blood? Caution tape? Little trickles of blood on the caution tape, even? I call that careless. It's still pretty terrible. And you know what I think happens with the signals? It's these woods. I suspect some of the trees are actively hostile to any communications passing through the air apart from their own. The trees have communication signals? Well, they certainly seem to if you're driving through late at night. We used to have the house next down the line on the highway until well, dad's suicide. And I'd sometimes walk over here crunchy winter snow under glimmer of stars in the black. I could hear them whispering, but I didn't know the language. It was scary. Arriving here was just as scary from what I remember you telling me in the old days. Oh, when you had a terrific crush on me? Who says that ever changed? <laughs> well, it wasn't her sudden rages that frightened me most. Well, flares of temper, I should say. <laughs> Mother didn't like me to call them purple, red in the face rages, even though that's just exactly what they were. She would quiver slightly when I talked about grandma. <laughs> Sometimes more than slightly. 
It wasn't the way she wailed on me with those hands if she thought I'd been naughty or, or pinned me with a fierce look out of those big, angry eyes if she decided to punish me spiritually instead. <laughs> it was her vitality. I always had suspicions where it came from. She was older when I first was aware of her discreet existence and mom or dad ever got to be and I had this feeling she stole their middle years and maybe other people's too. Still so youthful even, well, I suppose she's as old now as she's ever going to be. But I bet she'll make a pretty corpse in the coffin. How did anyone get close enough to, um, well, how did she die anyway? Blast of a shotgun. Not much a karate kick or even a swift twaikondo move can do to defend that. I, I look into the latest of her much younger lovers. She had quite a string of them, didn't she? In the years we were growing up to take our adult place in the world. You know, I saw a period painting of Elizabeth Bathory once. God, what does that look mean? I'm not a suspect, am I? Not if you were as far away from the scene as GPS indicated on my cell phone. <laughs> now that I got any more precise information than I got an unclear broken signal. Well, what do you want to know? Or what will some DA's assistant want to badger me into admitting on the stand? I'm a big fan of those shows, you know. I've even acted on a few. Did I love Grandma? Did I hate her? Did I wish her dead sometimes? Yes, yes, and yes, if I'm testifying under oath. Sometimes in such quick succession, it made my head spin. <laughs> I had a complicated relationship with Grandma. I'm sure just about everybody did. Somebody will ask you the usual questions, but not me, I think. Me, I also like Raul, her latest for this bit of mischief, especially since we hear he's fled the county and by this time probably the state. Well, haven't you put out an APB? I did it over the cell phone. I'm not sure my instructions got through. Tell you the truth, if we were short-staffed until the next graduating class, I'd prefer somebody else to lead this investigation. Well, with family history, I'm a little too close. What do you mean? You weren't one of her, um... What are you talking about? It's her granddaughter I always had a thing for, and I don't mean your sister, Rosie. What can I say? You're married now. I've resigned myself. Oh, well, I can remember when you didn't think that was an unsurmountable obstacle. I don't think it's fair to throw that in my face. <laughs> I was drunk. There was serious moonlight, and I deeply, gravely, mournfully apologized with sincere regret. You weren't that drunk. It was barely a half moon, and what pissed me off most was your apology. But who'd expect a man to understand that? Anyway, you aren't blind, and even at the best of times, you have a slippery eye for the ladies, and you knew she was beautiful. She was my grand aunt. A few times removed, true. My mother was a second cousin of your mom, not close enough that there'd be anything to worry about with kids. God, I don't believe I just said that. Chalk it up to serious deep sleep deprivation. Please, please. Please. What if I don't want to? What if I want to deprive you of a little more sleep, huh? Oh, my God, what am I saying? I'm jealous of my own grandmother. I'm competing with her as if she were alive, and well, I think the news hasn't really sunk in yet. I was never fascinated the way other young men were by her ageless beauty. I mean, that in the strictest objective sense, you understand. She was 86 on her birth certificate. Well, I would have taken her for 43 if I weren't 45 and one of her godchildren. Well, Raul took her for 23, but that was sycophantic. Sycophantic? Yeah, sycophantic. Sucking up because he wanted into her pants. I guess I would have guessed 37 myself and I'm 39. Well, there's more to this than meets the eye. For his sake, I hope he didn't register the shotgun. 
What are you saying, girl? We found the murder, found the murder weapon. weapon. All due respect. You can't be thinking what you're thinking, girl. A vestigial tail wouldn't be admissible in a court of law as even circumstantial, and it, it couldn't pull the trigger on a shotgun either. You need a finger for that. What motive could he have? except mad, unrequited love, raging passion, inflamed tenderness towards the first and deepest love of his life. <laughs> Yours truly, in case you hadn't guessed. Well, I could almost forgive him if it was that. I could. Deprive him of sleep a whole hot, heavy hour and a half until he drifts off into blissful, orgasmic slumber. I wonder if he still snores. I wonder if his ears still prick up as he pounds, pounds, pounds towards climax and droop down the side of his face at the moment he floods a girl's fount of desire. <laughs> well, I hope I don't have to speak to him through bulletproof glass. Scene two. Red Ryder walks to an interrogation set, sits in a single chair, and waits. I wonder if tapes and cameras are on. Somebody behind that one-way glass for sure. <laughs> Do they expect people to get so bored they confess to the empty air? Can't see how it would be advisable. Might be sheer fantasy. <gasps> Better not mention any details of the crime in case they wonder how I knew them. Tony Pitchblend enters followed by Karina Petrimony. That'd be a good place to start. Details of the murder known only to the perp. Go. Excellent way of proving your innocence if you try and get all the details wrong. I was at the scene. I was called there by Albert. You think this one couldn't come up with a false report on the spur of the moment just like... My partner's excitable. We're eliminating suspects is all. However low their likelihood of involvement. When everyone's eliminated, that can be, you'd better believe we'll have the guilty party by the short hairs. Care to go on with your confession? I wasn't confessing. You're forgetting. She has one of the stronger alibis overall. Not unimpeachable, but still. When's the last time somebody was convicted who didn't have an alibi to mislead us at the start? So, Miss Wright. <clears throat> Not a pretty picture when we found her. Though I'm told she was quite a looker when alive, even at her age. You still see it in the figure since the damage was mostly done to the head, shoulders, and breast. No defensive wounds, so the first blow must have killed her. The rest were struck. I'm taking a wild leap into the unknown here. In anger. The kind of intimate damage you'd expect from somebody involved with the victim. Or well known to the Vic and jealous over someone who was involved with him. Isn't it true you and our colleague Albert Skillset had a bit of a tangled history? Oh, the tale I could tell you about that. <laughs> really, I can't see how I could not have noticed sooner unless it's retractable. Do tell. Tape recorder's on. Jealousy mitigating circumstances. Now's the time. Plea bargains. Good behavior. Or I somehow repressed all memory of it. Also, we're not entirely sure about detective skill sets whereabouts in the relevant hours. Before word came in, investigation commenced. Were we interrogating here? Detectives not in the hot seat and won't be so long as I'm in this chair. Circumstantial at best and barely that. Hair fibers, suggestive DNA, hair gel, cologne, peculiar metal in the lipstick sample. <laughs> Albert didn't wear lipstick. I wasn't speaking of Albert. Don't look at me. There'd be DNA and other personal indicators from Albert and I both all over grandma's house. We were frequent visitors. Why aren't you tracking down Raul? He's surely your chief suspect, fleeing with dubious intent. We've got him in our crosshairs. As a matter of fact, he's just been apprehended and they're bringing him in for questioning, even as we speak. We'll need this room, busy caseload. You understand. <clears throat> Free to go. This means you. 
Take a few minutes to finish your coffee. I don't have any coffee. Oh, you're right. Sorry, I meant to bring you one. Well, <clears throat> Karina and Tony exit. Scene three. Red Rida sits pondering a moment, crosses to a bar. Could use something stronger anyway. Bourbon on the rocks, Natalie. Old granddad, as per usual. Hmm. Fairly new granddad. Grandma's side, the other one I knew all too well. Dull as dishwater. Eyes just like, as a matter of fact, though more milky these days. Hmm. Everyone said he was criminally handsome. And that's certainly how he comes across in surviving photos. Mom resembles him a bit, and she's a knockout. <laughs> The red hair I have from Grandma. Don't know what she does lately to preserve it. We all seem to have been blessed with gorgeous genes. Not so lucky in the mate department with the industrial accident that ended my father's life when he was barely 30 and I was barely three. Oh well. My husband's still alive and he's almost 32. Sorry for your loss. I appreciate that. Well, and at least one copper at the police headquarters thinks I'm a person of interest in that fatal assault. <laughs> what kind of wrist strength do they imagine a girl like me has anyways? I wouldn't believe it if they found the bloody axe in your home or garage. Axe? Though, I don't have to tell you. You're always a person of interest to me. Funny coincidence. She came into the bar two nights ago. This wouldn't normally be a spot she'd frequent, and... How did you recognize her? She introduced herself. Anyway, she's a dead ringer for you. Thanks a heap. She's more than twice my age. I prefer you in insincere flattery mode. Anyway, she seemed anxious about something and not just the new stud muffin on her arm, if you know what I mean. Um. Yes, uh-huh, that's him. He was... Well, Raoul had reason to fear displacement, it seems. And what about me? This was a bar I always kept secret from him. For obvious reasons. Mm. Scoot girl, there are customers at the other end needing your services, and I require time to think. <sighs> Did Piotr find out about, well, who knows what all, <laughs> and decide to pay me back in the most intimate family way? Well, it's lucky I didn't know about this before tonight or they'd be painting a big bright target known as motive all over my back. Green-eyed jealousy. Green-eyed red rider. I don't deny it. I wonder what my husband's insurance is like. I pass indicators he's headed for an early grave anyway. And what's your friend having? The same. She's not a, barely an acquaintance. We've never been formally introduced. How long have you been sitting there? Never mind. It's too noisy to overhear much uh, anyway. And I'm off duty. In my experience, are the fuzz ever really off duty? Then again, I have excellent ears, wouldn't you say? <laughs> They don't go on as long as my legs, but uh, they hear better. I can hear through most noise, and if I can't for a minute or two, I have phonographic memory and some sort of mechanism in the head for filtering out distractions on playback. It's been tested in court, but not to worry. I'm on your side. And anyway, we have Raul sweating up dangerous admissions in a box behind a one-way mirror, wishing he could sleep a little but go to the bathroom, even as we speak. Optimum conditions for detailed confession and not a peep out of him about a lawyer, last I heard. But even though I am the good cop on your file, a word of warning, I never distort or cover up evidence. Sometimes a little for a colleague on the force, but for a civilian, never. Don't look too closely into your husband's insurance until all this mess with grandma's thoroughly resolved. 
enough. Shop talk. I hate it. If this is a way of eliciting who knows what admission across two pillows. That's contraindicated in the rules of correct police procedure. Toss things like that all the time in a court of law. Anyway, I told you. I'm off duty. Get a gal and wind a little with another gal. Incoming. You look much smarter and more elegant out of work clothes. You have no idea how I look out of... What did you say? Husband approaching. Whose? Like I know your husband from a hole in the ground. Dutra slides in behind Red, hands on her shoulders, lightly massaging. Uh, funny surprise seeing you here. You're hurting me. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know my own strength sometimes. Mm. And sometimes you do. It's not as if I have anything against a little rough trade in private. Uh, Who was the girlfriend then? I just showed up a minute ago. I'm investigating a murder, but even a hardworking detective needs downtime to relax now and then. Pure coincidence that she turned up here. Pure coincidence that I didn't end up in a seedy bar with my wife? I'll have you know I'm anything but a seedy barmaid, and I think you owe me and the place both an apology. Oh, basis apologies, I humble even. Fair, for their mind and memory altering potations. I, I, I may have misread the ambience and the personnel both, uh, particularly the latter. Well, uh, I'll rub you back again if you don't answer. PDA, will you ever get the memo on that? We are slightly acquainted as it happens. In my professional capacity. She and her loud, offensive partner, I wonder who he reminds me of, were sweating me at the precinct house about Grandma's murder. Murder? Grandma's? D d dead? You, you, you mean on your mother's side? My grandma, not your grandma. Well, marry a wife, marry a family groping. Well, Dad's mother doesn't even live on this continent. They'd never suspect me in her murder. God forbid. But uh, how can they suspect you in a... Who says we do suspect her? No more than anyone else, and considerably less than several. How do you know what he drinks? You said he never came in here. He came in, he came here two nights ago, I told you. Oh, uh, delighted to hear it. Uh, a pity if the wife of my bosom should involve in so disreputable an action as a murder. Uh, oh, poor grandma. I'm the type people spill their life stories to if you hadn't noticed, plus, I overhear. And yet he hadn't told her he was married to me. Uh, city's finest are gorgeously represented on the feminine side. Well, he was here with Grandma after all, and I don't recall ever telling her I was married myself. You were here, I believe, in search of your wife? We we'll already have one of those. Uh, Shall we go, dear? So soon. What can we do at home that we can't do in a crowded, noisy joint like this? From within, bounce, rebound, and jounce, and slam like a rubber band off each wall, etc. Piotr and Red exit. Within an inch of my life, you promise. So, uh, just what have you overheard lately? Hmm, maybe even a little extra inch, eh? <laughs> Anything of interest to a flat foot and off-duty heels? My mad fool. Well, 
between you and me and the bar rail. Blackout. Any joy in the physical evidence? An overflowing cornucopia, way too much to sort at this point. Patterns emerging? We have loads of viable suspects. What's helping us narrow it down? Nothing I can see. Forest for the trees. DNA and fingerprints from literally dozens of males. Who knows how old the more smudged of them are, but the clear recent prints are of men in their 20s and early 30s. From what I hear, the DNA is... Uh... From the crime scene or in and about the person or the vic of the Vic. Either way, a nightmare of branching trials, trails, hair fibers, every shade, some of them dyed. What's a man in his early 30s doing dyeing his hair? Vegetable dyes, mostly from what I hear. Most, but not all. Raoul, for example, her main squeeze of the past three years, I think he was trying to hide the first appearance of gray. She didn't much tolerate signs of aging in a man, from what I gather in the interview transcripts. Haven't looked in on any of the interviews? Best entertainment outside of a blockbuster movie. If only they didn't seem to lead us deeper and deeper into a labyrinth. Forgotten to bring along your ball of string, detective. Don't worry, it'll solve itself eventually. I can see a few leading threads emerging already. They'll lead us out, don't they always? Says a lady in the department with the best all around overview. But what's our closure rate overall? A little over 37%. This isn't personal for you, is it, Tony? Blackout, scene five. But I'm not feeling the granddaughter in this at all. I go where the evidence leads, but something's not right about Miss Ryder. If you want, Next time we have her in the box, you can be the bad cop, I'll be the good cop. Maybe that'll shift my perception a little. Never works as smoothly with female as male perps. Suspects. Men feel like a fire's lit under their ass if a woman treats them as suspicious. I like the current boyfriend, Raul. Motive, opportunity, fled the scene, alibi thin as tissue after a good nose blow. I'd like him better if he were named in a will or an insurance policy. Records ought to be on their way to us even as we speak, or by the time we speak tomorrow at latest. Anyway, the seven semen, semen samples found in grandma have to be a motive. Raul, like just about any man on this planet, could only have contributed one of them. Could? You don't mean that. Nothing that turns up in the swab. So he must have n not made a contribution for some days at least. Forensics is sure to have more exact parameters and specifics. Motive there. He's not the brightest bonfire in the Windsor Carnival, is he? Would, even have, would he have even suspected cuckolding? How did she keep her skin so smooth and wrinkle-free? There's no evidence of surgical procedure or injection. Syringe injection, I mean. Blood in the skin cells all over her body. Not her blood. This was left as a persistent residue after every trace of that was ingathered for evidence and the body cleansed. Minute cellular traces between the pores. Some of it decades old. She's been a regular dealer on the black market in plasma, which is something of a relief, but I can still understand why Albert was harping on the name Elizabeth Bathory. You ever read the case file of her in the history books? Our esteemed colleague Albert. Bit of a surprise where his sample turned up. Disappointing, I'd go far as to say. Could mean his badge, even if he's not the one in the berserk jealous rage who did this appalling messy thing. You don't really think he is. I just hope our visit to his digs doesn't turn up a weapon to implicate him. Shh. Media might be listening. In six, spotlight up on Albert, joining them in the interrogation room. Of course it was an axe. A woodman's axe. And you know exactly where you're likely to find it. We need probable cause. Get it. Swab of DNA on a coffee cup and bring him in during an informal chat. Do I have to teach colleagues with, as much, with almost as much seniority as I? 
have the baby steps? Do we have his DNA? He was one of grandma's intimate visitors the last crowded week of her life. What was Red's husband doing in Russia before he came to this country and secured a visa through marriage? Damn him anyway. A woodsman. What's the term? A lot of trees. Uh, agent in the wild. He was a, um, a forest ranger. Can you tell what that is in Russian? But I bet what grandma could. She knew seven languages, if not more. Drove me nuts crazy. More, more, harder, harder, in jumbles of all of them. I'd be careful of that kind of talk without a lawyer present. You're not helping your case any, that's for sure. All this on a judge's desk in an hour's time? We manage it, you think? Ah, I see how it is. I'm a suspect here. Careful who you bang in the most innocent way possible. Considerable mutual pleasure and all. Don't know when she might turn up dead in circumstances suspicious and squalid. Still had a lot of her looks, a lot of Red's looks, if you want to know the truth. Anyone who did know the discrepancy in their ages would have taken them for twins. It was love at first sight with Red, you know. Not for her. She had just been born and didn't have facial recognition yet. But that faint shock of red already, bright round cheeks, you could eat up, gobble them, um, um, yum, yum. He's got to go a great deal further. He's hoping for an insanity plea. We don't know he's done anything pleadable yet. How could I resist when the twin of that lady, now grown to high school years, merely batted her Blazing lashes at me. That's OCD. Coloring your lashes as well as your hair? She never needed dye any more than Botox or facelifts or laser surgery. I was 15 the first time I plunged eagerly into her devious web with its savory aroma. I, I don't know if she ever forgave me for crying out Red's name. We could book her for stat rape if she hadn't passed out of our jurisdiction. Then again, the good Lord's a sterner judge than any of us. Can't we just caution you again? A lawyer present so you don't simply spill every Think bit. I need a lawyer? I didn't come into this country on a temporary visa and nefariously court the only woman I've ever loved. Just when she was slowly coming around to my way of thinking about a church wedding. And, and steal her right from under my nose. I didn't have the special axe I used for clearing dead wood in the great forest I surveyed. Brought in by diplomatic pouch. You should check with Mr. Pyotr Sergevich Kozlov's links are to the higher ups. I bet he'd rig an election as soon as look at it. We do know it was an axe of foreign make the striations match no domestic samples. I always got to wonder when we're being pushed in the direction of one suspect by another. Aha! The truth comes out. I am a suspect. Do your worst, false friends. There could be a promotion in it. Everyone's a suspect until patiently eliminated, which I'm confident you will be. Me too. 97%. But you really should lawyer up for the duration if I were you. Can we continue this at a later point in time? Because unless I'm definitely under arrest, I've got a shift to work and more than one urgent criminal to run to earth. Albert exits, scene seven. I thought he was on administrative leave. Certainly the impression I was under. Better make inquiries. If he's lying about that, it might be just the break in the case we're hoping for. <sighs> Hate to think it, but gosh. It just might be. You can go, Detective. Oh, <laughs> I see where he is. But don't go planning any trips outside of the jurisdiction. A new suspect slash witness slides into the interrogation room. We know him from an earlier scene. Of course I own an axe, a valuable one. A, a prime example of Eurasian craftsmanship. Ah, I understand your gest 
stop how foot soldiers have impounded. I hope you plan to return soon. At the moment, it's material evidence in a murder investigation. You understand. All that blood on the blade and the hafts, matching a certain very fresh Vic, fingerprints, DNA, a great many indicators point to recent use by you. Now is the time to allege planting if that's what you suspect. There can't be blood on that heritage model hatchet. It could corrode the metal irreparably. You understand what that means? This is a limiting act, not a, a knockoff by the thousands. Every blade, every handle is hand inscribed by his creator, Bershikov. In this case, I had dinner just at a table with just me and Vladimir. Paints a pretty picture. Contacts at the highest level in the administration. You wait till the embassy hears of this. There'll be an international nest of fleas in your ear. We'll take our chances. <laughs> you were pretty anxious to attend la attain landed status for a Russian higher up of such standing. Yeah, my compliments on your taste and marriageable help on your citizenship. Worth a dip or two for sure, independent of her usefulness. Uh, my compliments on your cynicism. The people of the steppes are uniquely qualified to appreciate cynicism. Uh, though we always mix it with deep and faith clear to the bottom of the ocean. You people lack that aspect of the complete man, uh, or woman, I, I should say. My love is deep and unquestionable, even if it served a useful purpose as well. Um, am I free to... Uh, you can go. Wish we had a cell free to hold you just the same. Right. Don't leave the city and especially not the country. My roots are in this country now. I flee no lawful organization or obligation to my spouse or any friend and matter at the risk of what persecution. Scene eight, Karina and Tony in the interrogation room. More and more like the Russian for this. He'd be quite a customer in bed is my guess. Staying power, I imagine, if you like that sort of thing. <laughs> Want to be sure he didn't have his axe tucked away in the closet, though. It's tucked away in our evidence room. Red safe for now from matrimonial rage. We, on the other hand, are by no means done with her yet. <clears throat> in spite of evidential distractions, it's the mysterious foreigner I like best for it. One person's guilt doesn't rule out every other suspicious party, or what's collusion for? How angry did it make you exactly to be excluded from a triangle of utmost familiarity? Are you speaking to me? I wasn't sure you were aware of my existence. Excluded is hardly a term I'd use. I had sole entry to that fairest of treasures for a little over the past six months. She said she wanted to grow old with me. Play that up with the passionate violins, maybe. Anyway, she wouldn't, on past indices. The swabs sampled microscopically in our labs don't exactly sing a hymn of fidelity. Seven distinct seminal visitors, not one of which had its origin in your member. How long had it been? A week? A month? Longer still? You'd been barred admission? You'd turn up in the samples if it were any more recent. Raoul begins to weep, the detectives vigorously high-five. Cracked like an egg on a marble countertop. Now we'll see what spills. I loved her. 
from the first mad moment of capture, suspecting I was out of my league, but who wouldn't? It was ecstasy, and so easy to ignore the tire tracks and footprints on the well-strewn path leading to her door. Like Christmas, with all the evergreens bunched close about the slim dirt road approaching, fine trail of pine needles, some green, some brown. Why wasn't I enough for her? Why was I suddenly, after raptures I'd never dreamed of, let alone experienced, shunned? Shunted off, you could say. I could come up with as many as a thousand good reasons. Less certain why you were ever, in the first place, accepted. I hated her. And who wouldn't, after such passion, never knowing where I stood until I stood suddenly, naked and shivering, outside the protective snaffling of her web, Headaches cannot be so perpetual. That time of the month cannot drag on a full month, or a doctor should be called if it does. When did you begin to plot her death? I wish she was dead. She had wide-ranging passions. I could live with that if I had to, but to be coldly tossed to the curb when I'd nested so happily and cuddly in such soft, curled coverlets, it was more than a man or even I could bear. I have over-refined nerves, stretched far too taut for the coarse webwork of this world. I suppose that's why you took my shoelaces. Suicide watch. What a waste of much-needed manpower. You've got a good line in haplessness, but how do you explain the murder weapon we found in a hollow cubbyhole at your apartment? The fat patches of clotted blood. The smeary, bloody fingerprints. Honestly, I doubt he has the musculature required for a mouse killing. We're following the evidence where it leads. Besides, have you seen this is weekly gym bills? All is not exactly as it seems. You found a shotgun in my apartment. I don't know about any cubby holes. Somebody must have planted it. Maybe my landlord or somebody who knew him. That always happens in the early moments of a crime drama. You're in the business. You should know that better than anyone else. I just have to wait patiently till the true culprit is nailed, as you're wont to put it. I don't like the cell much, though. Raoul is ex escorted out of the spot. Red Rider takes his place. There was a shotgun found at my place? I don't see how that's possible. What do you mean I know a shotgun wasn't the murder weapon? I know it was. Heard it straight from the horse's mouth. Detective skill set told me right at the scene. Blackout, end of act one. Act two, scene one. Lights up on the section of bar rail. Supervisor Judy seated next to Karina, Natalie Wood pouring shots of bourbon over ice. One explanation, wouldn't appeal to a non-geek like you with such fabulous skin, is that in a parallel world, the old lady was blown to bits by a shotgun. Speaking as a non-geek personally, it appeals to me. And then somehow we're living in that alternative, alternate world. Is that what you're saying? It would have to be a parallel universe, I think. Alternate worlds don't turn up in the same universe according to anything I've read. It would be a bit unusual. Whatever the case, if it happened, we wouldn't be aware of it, would we? There's a hole in the theory. There's a more substantial one. I've re-examined the evidence and it's still a rather brutal slaying with a hatchet of unusually sophisticated make. The samurai sword of hatchet blades. Unnecessarily and angrily brutal since the first blow was fatal. The others seem to be pure rage. Details not to be shared randomly with civilians or what do we have to surprise suspects and witnesses with? My lips only open, my, my lips open only one way on a police matter. She's one of my most prolific snitches. Huh. Wouldn't have put it like that. Citizen with her ear to the ground, dedicated to aid in the maintenance of law and order. Second theory. Someone associated with this case is spreading false information. Likely as candidate, Inspector Skillset. He certainly misled Red Ryder. But when could he have misinformed Raoul de Bunstrup? There was a seven hour window, maybe more, 
between murder and active investigation, of course. But wasn't he the lead investigating officer? Are they even allowed to murder Vix? What are you looking at me like that for? Planting false leads? Isn't that what this is all about? I'd be the last to say it doesn't arouse suspicion. Still... Too early in the game to go assigning motives for what's certainly an unpolicemanlike action. We're not even sure if he was deluding suspects or himself deluded. In either case, he's no longer the investigative lead. I only hope if he found any meaningful clues, they won't end up fruit of the poison tree. I'm confused. That sounds more like the Snow White M.O. Stepmothers protested her innocence through three levels of appeal. Another great looker of a certain age. Can't stand competition from the up and coming generation. The dark underbelly of all of this longevity and beauty enhancement. What do you make of the hair samples we found with the dual properties? Human and canine both? I shudder to think. Looks at paper Natalie Wood has slid across the bar. Oof, not tonight, honey. <laughs> Slides it across to Judy, who nods and looks up. We're so dead tired with the overtime hours we've been racking up on this case. And others. All you'd get out of that proposition is two snoring cops in your bed. And I've got a husband to go home to. Be <laughs> used to my snoring. And I wouldn't want to put a civilian through it on a first date. Scene two. Judy and Karina exit just as Albert Skillset slides onto the last visible stool. What's your pleasure? With those big red eyes, way toothy grin, and prominent scratchy jaw? My badge and gun back first and foremost. Second, I suppose my authority to lead on this case. I can understand the thinking, what with family ties and others. It shames me to mention, but too close to the case. But how can I help but be close to this? I want to be in the kill, at the kill, when they run this animal to earth. If I could throw the switch myself and watch the fur fly. It would be pellets or lethal injection if we were in capital jurisdiction still. Red Rida enters. We're all too civilized for our own good. What defense have we really against the beast of the primitive world? You know what I mean, don't you? I have my suspicions. Speaking of which, we're two nights past the full moon. This is the first night this week I'd feel safe inviting you home. Let me finish locking up. Natalie exits as Red Rida comes up to bar, looks beside one of the stools and retrieves her purse. No one noticed this. It has every piece of identification I own. I didn't know this was one of the places you trot to in your rounds. Strange, I've never run into you here. We can go. It seems I already locked up, but then how did you get in? Oh, hello, Red. You coming with Albert and me? I know he's willing and there's lots of room in my double. If it turns out there isn't, we can scrunch together real close. I think I'd be nervous with this one alone, now that I know he can walk through walls, but there's safety in numbers. Even if they're both suspects in a murder investigation? You only live once, I say. Blackout, scene three. How many coffees have you had this morning already? I lose count early these days. <laughs> early or late? I'm never sure which it is anymore. Look out a window if you can find one. That'll give you a ballpark. My watch is broken and who has time to get it fixed? Mine says 12.30. Noon or midnight is what I'd like to know. <laughs> Some interesting things have uh, come up to light about exiled main squeeze Raul. That wimp? Much as I'd like you to put him away for a long time, I think he'd have enough trouble lifting the murder weapon, let alone striking with deadly force. What about all the gym training? You see any evidence of that? I made it up, of course. 
What? What are you looking at me like that for? Interrogation 101. Mislead and confuse your suspect. Where did all those bruises come from? My Piotr. He gets a little carried away. The coloring on some of these are lovely. Even so, we may have struck Raul from the plausible list too soon. It seems he suffers a rare form of lycanthropism that typically strikes between half moon and gibbous, or vice versa. Hey, he must be just about due again. That can make a difference. If the murder weapon had been 30 bites with slashing canine teeth, I'd say this might just be the break we're needing. But in a wolf state, he wouldn't even have opposable thumbs. <laughs> That's a popular misconception. True in fewer than 27% of cases, most lycanthropes remain between 50% and 75% consciously human, in spite of the wildly sprouting hair and loss of height due to squatting on haunches when they try to stand upright. In that case, the blows would have been struck from below. Wait a minute. Oh, never mind. I have it right here. First one was. Subsequent blows were from above, but that's to be expected. First stroke put her down for the count. I suppose the other 22 blows were just to make sure. I wish I knew why Detective Skillset told two of our prime suspects the deed was done with a shotgun. Insanity, def insanity defense is still my best guess. Or he may have been wanting to set someone up in the hot box which one in the heat of the moment would blurt out hatchet instead of shotgun. Which would clear Red Ryder and Raoul de Bunstrup since they both blurted out shotgun. Unless one or both is so diabolically clever that they anticipated our questions and gave the answer that would confuse us the most. Criminal mind, you know? Frankly, I'm beginning to like Raoul better for this. What with the uh, conditional uh, lycanthropy. Personally, I think the redhead, at the very least, knows much more than she's telling. She can spill it all to me anytime she likes. You notice the uncanny resemblance to Granny? Oh, not you, too. How recently? Oh, I see. Did you know they tested your DNA, too? I suspected. Everybody was in a rush to help me dispose of my coffee cups. But those are your own notes. Why do you seem so surprised? I bet you don't know half of what's in your notes if you flip through it now. I've seen it work in the box. Sleep deprivation and the floating sense that everything's known and not known. Dreamed and awake. Apparently, I'm subtly interrogating you now. Under the guise of sifting evidence, I can see now that I suspect it as much. My alibi isn't paper thin, though, if I could remember what it is. Internal affairs will be happier than piglets in their own runny feces. Eating it all up. <laughs> I bet I didn't sleep 10 minutes last night, and I'm sure I slept even less the night before. Sleep, what a concept. I keep picturing all those plasma bags she dumped into the basin and laid over herself in the shower. Ugh. Anyway, last night? You said it was past midnight. Even as we speak? In theory, but it might only be early afternoon. They have sandwiches in the situation room. Boards full of trails of evidence, more thick and impenetrable than our notes combined. Photographs, <laughs> penciled in names, notes, lines of connections. Oof, not sure I can handle the confusion of all that, even in search of sustenance. Coffee. Crullers and bear claws and donuts and danishes and cupcakes with star, flower, and genital patterns in the icing. An overload of sugar, that's what we need to jumpstart our brains into some semblance of attention. The facts are all there. Too many of them. I am HIO, and it's not even that they don't add up. It's that they add up too many ways. Who's to know which answer is correct? I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Much good it do. The killer isn't one of us. Scene four. 
Tony and Karina now stand in the interrogation room across from Albert. Sure. I probably told Raul and Red that the murder weapon was a shotgun. If there's voice evidence of that, or they both, they're both positive in their recollection. But I swear, I don't remember anything saying anything of the sort. And I can't think why. I would, unless it was a trap. To, ah, trip them up. That's it. I was trying to trap them up. Your love for Red Ryder is public knowledge. A legend clear through the department, at least. Why would you want to establish her guilt? You'd be likelier to conceal evidence if it told against her. Conceal evidence? You think I could be that unprofessional? Maybe I wanted to establish her innocence, in my own mind at least. Searching for facial cues of guilty knowledge I'd hoped against hope wouldn't be there. I'm positive I saw none. But if I had, I know a shyster or two who could benefit her case. Raul? That one's a cinch. All of us would love to get a rope around that miserable specimen's hinds, legs, and forepaws both. But it didn't work, did it? Nothing in your notes to indicate, at least. How do I know? I can't remember if that was even my strategy. Do you know how long it's been since I slept? Not quite so long since we've been in bed, is it? Isn't it? I think I'd have remembered. Down, boy. I was referring to the defense, the acute. I was referring to Albert. Scored a double header last night, according to information from the second head, as it happens. And since she's not here, I'll call her a snitch if I want to. What's this? Got lucky, our temporarily suspended colleague. Not with any suspect, I hope. That could contaminate the pool of evidence. Interesting that you didn't tell the tale of two barrels to the Russian. Red's permanent residency groom? He's famous in his home country. The woodsman, they call him. Quasi-legal government approved assassination. He knew exactly what happened if he didn't wield the blade. He wouldn't be fooled by talk of an alternate weapon. What sent him fleeing for his life? What am I, a diplomatic aid? My guess, nothing did. Still has too many official contacts for that. The whole fleeing of his life scenario, my guess, deep cover. He has nothing resembling an alibi, but he also has the weakest motive of any suspect on our long list. Really, not a scintilla of one so far as any of us can determine. Unless collusion between him and his blushing bride? A service for a service. Marriage for murder. She had complicating feelings about Grandma, but hating her and wanting her dead were prominent among them. Scene five. Albert has slid out of interrogation chair into the darkness. Hell, she didn't even make any bones about it but she did have an alibi such as it was. You ever know a truly guilty party, too? Red Rida slides into the chair. Many times, you don't have to watch many crime shows to know there's a popular belief people never kill somebody they wish were dead. What better way to allay suspicion than to say it right out the first time you're confronted about the deed? You've put in a lot of time at the gym. Those are impressive biceps, triceps, quadriceps, and uh, upper body muscles. Well, your colleague seems more interested in my legs. I know for sure grandma wasn't kicked to death. My colleagues just informed me you were with a detective skill set last night. Intimately, if you know what I mean. Kiltre isn't watching through the glass? Oddly enough, I do. Knew by rumor what intimately meant since about the age of eight, but by direct experience from the age of 12. He was about your age now, but a good deal subtler and smoother. 
Why didn't you press charges against an animal like that? We know you didn't, or it would have come up in your records. Were there any charges to press? To this day, I'm not sure. Though it didn't exactly displease me when I heard about the fatal explosion. Except for the other 15 people that died, I mean. Relation? Grand uncle on my mother's side. If I had told anyone, you know what it was like back then. Would I have been believed? I would have believed you. You were in a sandbox then. Um, Grandma introduce you? What makes you ask me that? Yes. Is that what you want me to say? Yes. <laughs> All right. Thanks, but that has been used. Twice, maybe three times. Well, it seems this mythical hatchet has struck again. And you and your husband were the last people to see the latest victim alive. Blackout. Scene six. Uh, why do they have to keep being completely uh, in the dark like this? I just wish I had my turn in the box and get it over with. I mean it. We're, we're citizens, even if only recently. We have the right to face our accusers if we... But they claim they don't want to give too much away and they have a legitimate suspect. <laughs> What kind of nonsense is legitimate suspect? I only wish I knew less about how my Aurora, apart from wishing it hadn't happened, of course. Uh, she was no better than she should be and probably worse. I'm not saying she deserved what she got, but we Russians are very uh, chivalrous about women that way. Eh? Shotgun blast obliterating that fabulous beauty she dedicated her life to preserving. Who could think anybody deserved that? Who told you such foolishness? It was a hatchet. Or uh, so I heard rumors. That they thought of taping devices in on the walls or... Oh, Overhead, uh, you know, from fixtures somewhere. Uh, ah, what am I saying? Of course not. I still reside in my endlessly suspicious nation of birth. There's bound to be a camera, but usually no audio device. Just about everything we do in public spaces these days is observed, and fortunately, no security camera snapped a shot of the villain who. You say it was with a hatchet? I was wondering how a seeming professional could let such a clue slip to a suspect, but I see he was following standard operating protocol and misleading me. That wasn't very nice what you said about my Aurora. Huh. You want to do something about it, pretty boy? <laughs> In my very boots, I am shaking like a trembling, as some sort of cowboy would say. <laughs> I just wish they'd get me in there and the interrogation over with. The moon is practically gibbous. I'm better away from people. Still, no intimidation felt. Uh, is, is that hair sprouting everywhere your flesh is visible? It's a blessing you're about fully clothed, huh? I could see the value of a burke in your case. What? Posable thumbs this time. Good. I don't always have them. Fierce instinct and muscle force are an animal! <sighs> Help! Help! Woo! The man just cuts back here! Cunning and tool manipulation skills of a man, a deadly combination. You'll soon learn to your sorrow. Uh, 
that explains how you could manipulate a hatchet at the moment of murder. I don't need a hatchet to rend and dismember you. My claws are sufficient. Where did you get that axe? <laughs> That's to know and you to die never guessing. <laughs> Piotr chases Raoul, swinging and missing, Raoul gradually going into a lope on all fours until Piotr is grabbed on both sides by Albert Skillset and Tony Pitchblend. He struggles to retain grip on hatchet to swing, but he's pinioned. Axe falls to the floor. Looks like they revoked my suspension just in time. They haven't yet. You just happen to be on your way to the box yourself for another round of feathering out of confession. While these two stew a little longer, saw an assault with the intent to murder in progress and police instincts and reflexes kicked in. Otherwise, it would be a deficient collar. Deficient cause for the arrest, but not for this comprehensive I was in mortal fear for my life. You let him into a police precinct with a vicious cutting weapon. He could have killed me. And vice versa. Security does seem to have been a little lax. Still, all's well that ends well. Thank God he was apprehended before that ax did its deadly work. Now to gather up the evidence of his many murders and secure a grand jury indictment. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? You should see Koslov's jacket in the country he came from. No wonder he was persona non grata. I am fierce animal essence held in check by puppyish devotion to a superior female. And uh, for sure not even persona. Yes. Who's a good boy? Is there an isolation cage in the kennels for his own protection and that of others? It's that way, and we better get ours behind bars as well. Karina and Tony exit with Piotr in one direction, Judy in the other with Raul. Hey, that was pretty exemplary service. Don't I get my badge and gun back? There's paperwork to be done in the morning, but rest assured, yes, yes. You like that, don't you? You'll be safer in there for now. I better deploy some cream, but first, disinfection lotion. Blackout, scene seven. Lights up on bar rail as detectives begin to assemble. Shots over ice poured for Karina, Tony, Judy, and Albert by a familiar looking bartender. They raise them to a toast. 37%. Motive and circumstantial evidence. Bury the hatchet. Over the lip. How's our wolf boy of uh, waning moon keeping? Fed and watered and sleeping contentedly. Rolled up in a happy furry ball with clothes hanging sloppily about his frame. No vestige of human consciousness at this point, I suspect. Oh, there's a vestige. He'll feel pretty sheepish when he wakes up and remembers. He alters claiming self-defense, but he hates anything lycanthropic with a passion. Known to have calmly slaughtered at least a dozen of his, in his own country of origin. Not even considered a crime by most of the higher-ups up there. Whatever her flaws of character, have you seen her monthly plasma bills? Grandma wasn't in the least lycanthropic, so what's his excuse there? Denies it, of course, but I think it's a slam dunk for the grand jury. Motive, weapon, opportunity. The embassy is appointing him a Russian-born council. They even tried to invoke diplomatic immunity. All is not as it seems with our supposed refugee. It must be disillusioning for the blushing bride. Scene eight, Red Rida enters. It's been a matter of weeks. Annulment should be a snap. I'm only waiting till after the trial so I don't prejudice the jury more than they already are. Something doesn't sit right with me about Mr. Koslov for Grandma's hatcheting. It's too neat somehow. Forestalls every other line of inquiry. 
Internal affairs at least won't have all that mopping up to do. None of our own are suspected any longer. That must be a relief for you, Albert. Just don't forget it's detective when I get my mad badge and gun back. I still outrank you. And given your history with the old lady, Tony, it has to be a relief to you as well. Tony! I don't deny it. She was an unusually fascinating and multifaceted broad. Is there any man in creation she didn't fascinate? Step up my game. Doesn't it seem to anyone else that the case against Piotr, not as a murderer in general, the evidence on that is irrefutable, even if, as is so often the case, he's more celebrated than liable to prosecution for earlier crimes due to corruption higher up. But Aurora Printeps, what was his motive? I might have let slip a few sentiments of long-simmering resentment across the marital pillows. And in his own way, Piotr was a devoted husband. Well, I would have said no, no, don't, if he'd asked me first, of course. I can easily imagine a man killing for you. Any number of men, almost at your expressed whim. Well, oh, aren't you sweet? But I thought Piotr had the least weak alibi of any... any of us. That's as good as reason of any. When is the guilty party ever the most obvious suspect? When doesn't he have the firmest alibi? If we're being honest, most of the time, in the 37% of cases we solve, Sometimes there's no viable suspect. Sometimes there are too many and not just on the police force. Never mind the odd officer and gentle wolf. Low blow, Tony. You're lucky I'm half drunk or I can challenge you to stagger outside and repeat that. But Tony's right. There are loads of suspects. Not only present company. We want this moved from red to black on the board. We better not look gift evidence in the mouth. But what about the other murder? Last night, I mean. Aren't Albert and I still the main sus... Uh... I'm confused. They told us you were murdered. I came here to grieve. I expected some grizzled old-timer pouring with sad, sentimental stories to tell about lost love generously spread. My sister? I'm not Natalie. I'm her identical twin, Lana Wood. I was in town for the funeral, and they asked me to work her shift. <laughs> I said it was a bit cruel at the time, but all fair in love and interrogation. I authorized the misinformation to loosen you up verbally. If it didn't lead to a confession, you might let slip something you knew and weren't telling. Maybe about an on, on and off again boyfriend who'd hop around on all fours to do your bidding. Relax, Albert. I'm just busting your balls. We know now who's implicated and you are not, officially. Neither the murder that happened, not the one we cooked up to generate information. It's true, you know. I wasn't murdered in the least. Any more than I have a twin sister as far as anyone knows. Or is the glass for herself, raises it. To us. The others raise their glasses. To us. To, us. to us. Blackout, end of play. Uh, please feel free to um, unmute your microphones, unmute your microphones and turn on your video and, and, and show our um, lovely actors some, uh, some support and some hand clapping. <laughs> You guys did an amazing job. Thank you so much. It was a Martin, lot of fun. Are you here? Yes, I'm here. Uh, Martin is our playwright. Good job, Martin. That was a fun yeah. script. It was a lot of fun. Do you want to tell everybody a little bit, a little bit about the idea you had in creating it? Uh, well, basically, um, uh, really, I just had uh, actually, if I recall correctly, there was a prompt about uh, about doing a modern fairy tale, and I was thinking about the possibilities, 
and uh, and the idea of combining um, uh, you know, combining uh, uh, a fairy tale with uh, you know with a, uh, uh, a, a noir inflected uh, poli police procedural just led to all sorts of ideas, and that's uh, that's how it came about. I, uh, I was um, I was interested in doing it. I don't know if it comes through as well as I'd like yet, but I was interested. I was interested in doing a, a story about police procedurals that would, uh, you know, that would show exactly how neat conclusions are reached and how, uh, how complicated, uh, you know, the evidence in a, in a case like this might actually be. Well, it's very interesting. I, I love the, 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 the wildness of the characters and the strangeness, and you never know when the next fang is about to come out. There's a lot of great comedy in there too, Martin. You should be very happy with that. I like that comedy in there. One of the limitations to Zoom really is that we can't hear the laughter, we can't really hear the applause. But um, I know that there were some people laughing very, very hard. Yeah, that would have been me. I was one of them. And, and yeah. clapping and going, yeah, on the couch. There's, a, there's just so many threads in there that are really funny and so many little acting tropes that always work. And I, I just love to see it fully done and uh, maybe even done as a radio play. Mm. Oh, that could be a lot of fun too, yeah. Martin, did you ever think of that, doing it as a radio play and really going crazy with the stage directions too? Well, I, uh, the stage directions is, um, you know, I don't know, I don't know if quite, uh, it doesn't quite come across here because a lot of the stage directions were, were left out, including uh -huh. the partial sets, but... Uh, there were uh, there were quite involved stage directions in this. I was kind of I was creating mini sets, a, a police I, uh, interrogation room, uh, a bar, and and so on and so on. I would have actually enjoyed for that to have been part of this. I think that would have been fantastic. Yeah, it's a little tricky with uh, with Zoom, I would think, because yeah. uh, you know, uh, uh, I I mean, as it is, uh, you, you've got uh, you've got angry uh, you've got people angrily confronting and chasing each other uh, and and their two uh, uh, their two images in in square boxes reacting um, but uh, I, I, it, it might uh, it might work as a radio play uh, as well uh, probably change it a little bit maybe make uh, you know maybe maybe make the you know the stage directions, a kind of uh, a, a kind of verbal tech, uh, verbal narrative texture in the background. It, that would be great because the thing with radio, of course, is no dead air, so it can never be completely quiet. But given the way you write, it's perfect. It'd just be like flushing the whole thing out. Yeah. Yeah, it might work. I uh, I've noticed a few uh, a few contests for radio plays the last little while. Uh, and I haven't had one that really, uh, uh, I really thought would work. Maybe this is what, maybe this uh, I should adapt as a radio play as well. I think, I, I think so. I think it would well, be- Well, that would be lovely. And you can actually do those on Zoom too. You can do audio only on Zoom. Not just- I have to audio. say though, as a director, I would give everything to direct this on stage. Cause I think- Well, Martin, if you do decide to do that, let, let us know and I'll be, I'll be glad to read it yeah i mean during a during um doing this as a film noir style mm -hmm. type show i love film noir i love yeah. noir anything you know um, um uh, like uh, double indemnity and those kind of things were just like have always been my favorite movies and i think this on stage um would be just one of the highlights of my directing career i would just love to do that well i have no objection could be a long uh, way to the <laughs> Martin, once you're back in theaters, I'll be contacting you. <laughs> I'll look forward to it. Ooh, we can bring the whole cast together. <laughs> that it's would a match. be fun too, yes. Does anybody want to share any insights from their roles or um, any of their, about their experience with it? So I, I, I have one. Um, Martin, I didn't have I didn't have a full grasp on Albert only because, well, one reason I've only read this script three times and two, um, 
I didn't understand the tale. Was he supposed to be like the devil himself or a demon or what was he, what was he to read? Well, the tale, is, uh, no, the tale wasn't, it wasn't uh, uh, demonic. It was, uh, it was wolfish. He was, uh, uh, he was one of a number of, uh, he was one of, of several characters who, um, uh, who, you know, uh, at, uh, at at certain times of the month, turn into a wolf. Uh, I think Raoul is the only the only other. Uh, Raoul is more uh, is more directly identified as that. All all you know about Albert is that she she sees a vestigial tail coming out of his uh, out of the back of his pants. And the, oh, his so it was like. See, I kept picturing like this devil tail, but you, what you intended was a wolf's tail. Yes. Ah, okay. Because I was trying to think about how I could be go into more and more evil with this, and I was just like, "How am I going to do this? I don't know." But now I get it. See, I, I, that I can understand. That's that's really good. Okay. There were a couple of references to Grandma getting plasma, and I didn't know if that was just kind of a joke about the crime scene or if she was a vampire or using it to keep her good looks or such combination. Well, the or rumor she bathing about, in it. <laughs> the rumor about Elizabeth Bathory is that she stayed young by, uh, you know, by, by bathing in, uh, in the blood of virgins. I don't I did know. Not know that. I don't know whether grand, Grandma only got the husband from Virgin stuff. So it, it, it would be tough, tough to get that large supply. <laughs> well, Grandma certainly didn't know any virgins at this point in the show. I mean, she obviously, <laughs> wherever she's she was getting virgin blood from, from, one it wasn't to the from other. her boys. <laughs> I know. We're laughing at a sexual predator. We should be upset. But, but you know. <laughs> So Barry's he Barry's laughing already. So Barry, what did you think? Actually, I, I had trouble understanding what was going on, and I think my hearing is not as good as it used to be. And and uh, a lot of times I try to read the scripts ahead of time, and that helps me um, understand them. But I, I had difficulty. I mean, I enjoyed it, but I had difficulty. Of following because it just I wasn't as crisp as I wanted to be and I don't think that's the actor's fault it's probably a technical situation and my ears so uh, but that's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> what about you Judith and Ian? <laughs> I, I, I agree I mean I got a little lost there until I until I put it together it's like oh yeah this is about you know grandma and the wolf when the wolf changed in the but in the in the jail cell, but I, I I was a little bit lost with Tori's character. Was Tori put in there uh, on purpose, or does Tori have a hand in it too? And then there was the, what I'm not quite sure why the barmaid was switched out with her twin. Um, I didn't follow that. I didn't follow. The, are they nabbing somebody with that? Or so I I didn't quite follow the end. Or was just I will say that for me, like that tonight was actually the first time that I understood all of that, and this is like my third reading of it. So um, I, it could be a little, a little bit clearer. Uh, those points, I would have to agree. Was yeah. was the bartender being switched out? Was that nabbing Red Ryder at some somehow, or was it just a joke? It was. I think it was just a joke, right? They, I mean, they faked. Be... They faked her death. Yeah, they faked it. They faked who's they death? Faked it. The bartender. Would. Oh, the bartender's death. Okay. Yeah. But that was, I think that was part of the joke, right? If I miss a Martin, Natalie Wood, you know, infamously or oh, famously yeah. or whatever, having passed away and then using her as the name yeah. in, in the show and then have it not be her, but her tw quote unquote twin, right? Um, they did have a younger sister named Lana. Yeah. Oh. She did. Yeah. That last that last scene might you know and, and what leads up to it might have to be clarified a bit. It 
it seemed to work reasonably well tonight, but uh, but I could see, you know, I could see touching it up a bit to 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 make uh, make clearer what's going on. At the very end, there's it's simply uh, it's simply a joke. Uh, uh, but I, but I'm not absolutely sure. I'm, it, it strikes me I could have made it clearer uh, earlier on, uh, you know, what uh, what was supposedly happening with uh, with Natalie Wood. I, I I don't know if I clarified that uh, in, the, in the earlier scene. I think uh, the script said because they're accusing Red Rida and Piel, sorry Albert that the person they slept with the night before was murdered, but they don't actually say bartender. They don't say the name, right? Yeah, I think it would be much oh, more clear okay. if they actually that, said who it was. That. Okay. And that's something the staging probably would have helped a little bit. Right. Because the, them leaving, the three of them leaving together out exactly. of the bar at that point when they, when they, when she talks about um, having, taking on Albert and Red at the same time. Right. Yeah. And then the, the next point coming back and, She's, you know, they've talked about the bartender being killed, but she's obviously right there in front of us. Right. And um, somebody, I don't remember who it is, that says, I thought you were dead, and she's not, right? So I, I, I don't know, in my way of thinking, it was explained, but it may be because I, I direct and I see everything in, on the stage as being done, as opposed to just listening to the script. Um, so I got it. My apologies to everybody else. Well, you're just smarter, Scott. Stop shutting no. off. No, 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 no. Because remember, in that scene, I'm supposed to be drunk. And I'm very, <laughs> very tired. And I actually have not slept in three days. So I'm really pretty tired. Um, yeah. Anyway, there you go. Well, wonderful feedback, guys. Thank you guys so, so much for volunteering your time and, and, and sitting through rehearsals and just you know, doing a great job on this play. I really, really appreciate it. And thanks to our audience. And uh, this video should be live by Friday, along with an audio version on our podcast, uh, which now that I think about it, <clears throat> maybe I'll add a little bit to it for our stage direction. <laughs> um, anyway, thank you guys so much. And uh, see you next week. We have a, another play next Tuesday. Thank Take you, care. Everyone. Bye, guys. Bye. Good, job, guys. Good to see Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye. Lovely reading.